hi guys today we are going to talk about watercolor color wheels so the color wheel that we're going to create today is uh, a little bit of a different um, approach than a regular color wheel and we will kind of get into that um, as we do it but you can see here that I have always been interested in different styles and types of color wheels through my sketchbooks through my artworks I've created a uh, uh, color wheels for journals and I'll kind of show you a little bit you can see here that I have done sort of a color wheel um, like a spinning one more of an interactive one that I created in some of my journals for heirloom Lux. so this one I uh, just kind of did a one in uh, the back of kind of one of my planners and I still get questions about this one uh, from Instagram so uh, you know I have kind of a different approach and sort of varied approaches to color wheels and how I like to do them so in this video and the next one we will kind of go through and I'll show you some of the different ways that I like to create them and I imagine that you've probably seen uh, Eret's uh, color wheels videos which are really I highly recommend they're so lovely and Eliana she's doing beautiful uh, color wheels and I really loved the one about the Van Gogh palette so um, yeah really interesting stuff and the, the way that everyone does them is different so you can see here that first of all we start with the actual color in the middle and then we dilute it with water to create a tint and then I do I mix the actual color with the pearl white Daniel Smith pearlescent white to get um, a sparkly tint then I mix it with the Schmincke Kaput Mortuum to get a shade and um, then I will mix the color with the hematite to get uh, the darkest shade we can get there so you will be able to see more of this and it will be become more apparent as we do the mixes and everything um, so first of all let's just go in and I will explain to you as well why I chose those colors more as well so you can pick different colors that are more suitable uh, to the colors that you mix so we'll go into that later but I'll just kind of quickly explain here so what I've done is I've just used um, this protractor to create the circles and then kind of measure um, you know in uh, how many um, times I wanted to do it so for the particular one we're doing now is five uh, so we you know we need five spaces one for the middle one two for the tints and two for the shades and I think I used like a three millimeter so on the side of the protractor there you can measure and it, you can use you know the measurement there and keep pushing it in however far um, and then so you can see what I'm doing here to create the kind of decal edge I am going around with water just water on my brush and it makes it really easy to um, create this kind of decal edge now I you can see there that I didn't put the water inside the circle only around the outer part of the circle to create this so we don't lose any of the um, area to put the color down okay so you can see here that I've kind of had a little play figured out which uh, ones that I want to use in the journal or in the uh, sketchbook and uh, I forgot to mention as well this is continuing the sketchbook series so I think this is the fifth installment so um, we are kind of creating more of an interactive color wheel here so you can see that I haven't done it in the sketchbook I'm actually creating on a separate piece of watercolor paper and then we are going to use some tiny brads to attach the color wheels in so they can actually spin in the book so the first thing we do here is begin with the main colors that we're using so we're in the middle 
of the uh, five um, bands and then we we create the color and then I'm diluting it so I just dip it in water once and then I you know um, lay the, that color down and you can see that I lift it up a little bit of color if I think that it's too dark um, to create the tint here so normally a tint is created by mixing a color with white so if you're using acrylics or oils you mix it with white to get a tint but we can just easily mix it with water and we can get a lighter version of the color so the next thing that I want to do here is mix the color with pearlescent white by Daniel Smith and that will create the a really soft and sparkly version of the color so the next thing here that I'm going to do I create some shades so rather than mix it with a gray I'm going to choose the Schmincke Kaput Mortuum because I really love mixing my shadow colors with a violet earth type color so uh, whether it's Kaput Mortuum or um, Daniel Smith Raw Umber Violet something like that to create these really beautiful or like a Peril Maroon or something like that so you know you can pick any color that you really enjoy mixing for shadows there um, it, but it might be a gray uh, and then or like a neutral tint and then for the last one I'm using Daniel Smith hematite because I also use this quite often as my black in my palette and so um, you know I, I like to mix things with that to create that depth but again, if you have a favorite black, you know, maybe Mars black or lamp black, um, you can easily substitute that for the hematite. Uh, or you might have two different sort of grays that you want to um, try out, like a, like a Kaput Mortuum and a neutral tint or something like that. So that would easily substitute in those places. So you can see here that I'm going through the same process again for my next color which is uh, Organic Vermilion by Daniel Smith. So the first color was Azalea by Nibs Watercolors. So I will link these, the colors that I'm using and everything down below. Uh, but you can see here that between the colors that I'm using I am leaving one of the triangles blank so that we can actually mix uh, those two colors together and create a really beautiful gradient A couple of things I wanted to mention if you uh, push the gear button somewhere around the video and change the playback settings to 720 you will be able to see everything in high def it'll uh, be a lot nicer of a viewing experience and then the other thing is you know this is basically going to serve as two things I guess a replica for um, or like a reference for you to be able to see at a glance some of your most used colors and how they'll perform or 
how they will look when they're um, mixed with certain things. And then the other thing is uh, you you find you can find mixes that you didn't know that you uh, really liked as well. So new favorite mixes. For example, I knew that I really enjoyed uh, some of these mixing the pinks and the purples with some of these shadows and I always uh, like the pearlescent white with everything but I, I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed the blues with the uh, shadow colors and so I'll show you some of those mixes at the end. Okay, so we began with the azalea, the, the neon pink, and then we had the organic vermilion by Daniel Smith. Then we had the pyrrole orange by Daniel Smith, and then we had the lemon yellow by Schmincke, and then the French ochre by Daniel Smith, the green gold by Daniel Smith, and now this one is one of my favorites. This is fuchsite by Daniel Smith. I really, really love this color. So this is a color that has an, a natural sparkle to it so it's really beautiful already uh, and then you know I still do the pearl white mix and everything um, and you can see here that all of these colors are I'm taking from my favorites palette so they're colors that I uh, recognize and use very often so you could either do the same thing or you could or you could um, use colors that you don't use very often if you want to try uh, you know different color mixes and variations Okay, so we just did Schmincke's Cobalt Turquoise, uh, Daniel Smith, let's see, Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue, Indigo, and then Sugalite, and then we did the Holbein Lilac. So I had thought I was recording, but I wasn't, but um, you can see there that I have mixed those colors together and created a really beautiful gradient between each color. So we'll just do a little bit of that now with these last ones. So you can see here that I'm mixing the cobalt turquoise with the indigo. And we start off with the, again, the original or the main color in the middle band. And then I will do the same thing that I have done, you know, for all the other colors, which is dilute it. And then use that mix, mix it with the pearl white, use that mix, mix it with the kaput mortuum and use the mix and mix it with the hematite.
Okay, so you can see what an absolutely beautiful color wheel that we end up with here. Now, you do not have to do it on an, uh, an another piece of paper as well. You could just do this straight into your sketchbook, but this is just the way that I really enjoy doing them. And so I will show you a couple of examples of ones that I have done in a sketchbook. And like there's different, there's so many different ways that you can try these things and use the color wheel. So you can see here on the left page, I have just done pinks in the color wheel. And in the middle, I have just mixed those pinks with pearl white. And then this one here is one of my favorite triads, indigo shell pink and French ochre. And this one here is a really beautiful one, Opera Rose, Sedona and Sugalite as well. So um, again, with those little color wheels and Eliana has been doing these a lot and they're really beautiful and helpful. Uh, you can just do a little tiny color wheel and try a few different color mixes. And um, it's really good to figure out color palettes and things that you like and how they mix and how they work together. And so for both of those color wheels, I also chose a different color to mix them with in the middle. This one is Sedona and Pearl White and the one below it was uh, the Kaput Mortuum as well. So now what we're doing is getting our brad. So I'm using these little star ones, these kind of sparkly star ones that we got at Michael's. So um, I think you can get these at Amazon or, you know, your craft supply store, something like that. And we are just poking a hole through, but you can see here I've got a little scrap of watercolor paper. So what I'm doing is I am um, adhering the color wheel to the little scrap of paper. And then we're actually going to glue the scrap of paper onto the sketchbook so that I don't have to poke the brad through the sketchbook paper. So I can sort of save the back of the sketchbook paper and use it for a, another page, another artwork. Because even though we're up to, um, we're only sort of up to number five in the sketchbook series, I have with the pre-filmed videos that are still sort of rolling out, uh, there are still quite a few pages that we've already uh, used up in the sketchbook and then I probably have about five or six spreads left so like you can see this video has taken up a whole double page spread here so um, yeah I wanted to kind of preserve the page in the back of it so this is the way that I uh, decided to do it okay so before we glue that down I just wanted to have a little play with these small ones to see you know where I wanted the placement of everything before I glued it down so what I am doing here is I'm kind of showing you in reference to the uh, the <laughs> color wheel that I had in my kind of travels notebook that is on Instagram that I get asked about how kind of I came to that or why I, um, you know, do that. So basically um, when I'm just playing around with color wheels in kind of a fun way, I almost use them as like a pie chart or I really also like to put patterns into the color wheel as well. So what I am kind of creating here is sort of a pie chart of how I enjoy um, the different colors or how much they kind of play a role in my palette. So um, you can see that the long one there that took up both um, slots that's porphyry violet ochre I love to use that I love to use it quite a lot um, then and so I just kind of keep going around like and you know choosing different colors in this very muted palette it's one of my favorite palettes and I do have a swatch video I think for this one um, and so I'm just using all those colors to create this little uh, color wheel it's not really for mixing it's more just a representation of the colors and how much I use them so there really aren't any rules in this um, I suppose a couple of the guidelines that I use are some of the lighter colors are often in the center like um, the buff titanium in the center there uh, but really you can see here like the phantom fire is on the outer and then the shell pink will be on the inner so it really just depends um, how I want to 
visually present them. It's not necessarily, you know, an accurate color wheel. It's just more a visual representation of a palette that I'm really enjoying using. Okay, so we have one more example that we're going to use in this video today and it's a similar thing, um, more of a representational color palette color wheel, uh, but we're going to use some brighter colors and some pastel colors and uh, just create, um, I'm just kind of, this isn't even really a color palette. I am just using colors and some mixes that I've been really enjoying all in one uh, color wheel. In the end, I feel like this one turned out like a little bit of a, what I would call kind of a circus color palette. And this one has been uh, <laughs> little by little having uh, patterns added to it. So when we do the sketchbook flip, I'll kind of show you um, how that's been coming along. But you can see here that once they're all completed, I have uh, just put glue on the back, just on the little scrap of paper 
and then we can put that um, anywhere that you like so you can see that I've actually placed it so that it's coming out of the sketchbook a little bit and then I love the fact that they can just all turn so one of the things I would absolutely love to do one day would be do like a huge wall full of just big turning color wheels and have this really like immersive exhibit with like just kinetic uh, color wheels and florals you'll see in the video tomorrow that there'll be like floral color wheels so I just think it would be such a beautiful experience to kind of be in a room with just all these large turning um, artworks but yeah so I hope that you enjoyed this video um, spring is starting to sort of come to life around here and I did get some footage of some blossom trees the other day so I was super excited about that uh, let's see you can kind of see the sparkles there better on that color wheel so like where I mixed the phantom fire and the uh, Holbein lilac and some of those really pretty sparkly mixes so you can see here these are some of my favorites from the color wheel I was experimenting with these kind of browns and blues and some of you guys really were loving this as well in the February um, color um, color mixes favorite color mixes so I think we're all on the same page with that they're beautiful beautiful mixes and let's see so I'll just give you a little flip through of kind of what we've done so far you can see that the cover page there is still blank and that's something that we will um, work on more towards the end of the sketchbook so we did this page today and then tomorrow's video will be another one about color wheels and kind of a different um, idea that I really enjoy playing with and that is like to put patterns inside them so have a lovely weekend enjoy um, painting or whatever you're doing and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow in the sort of part two I guess of the color wheel videos bye